and welcome back to the Pediatric Foundational Series here on the Dietitians and Nutrition Support Channel. My name is Allison Lawrence and I'm a pediatric dietitian in Southern California and I'm also a certified nutrition support clinician and I'm your host for our foundational series. We really designed this series with being able to provide the fundamental neonatal and pediatric assessment tools that we are then able to take and utilize in order to build robust nutrition support prescriptions. In today's video, we are going to be discussing everything about pediatric formulas. And if you haven't yet checked out our previous video where we talked about infant feedings from a human milk standpoint, fortification, as well as formulas, feel free to check out that video. We'll first discuss regulation for pediatric formulas. So unlike infant formulas, pediatric formulas are not regulated by the FDA. So they're not regulated in terms of nutrient quality or labeling, and they are excluded by the Nutrition Labeling Act of 1990. They do fall under the Orphan Drug Amendment Act of 1988 and are given the definition of being a medical food. So they are required to follow good manufacturing practices. In general, pediatric formulas are indicated for use for kiddos between the ages of one through about 13 years of age. However, you can also consider other factors such as the patient's weight. So we generally think of a pediatric formula being able to be utilized for kiddos that are between about 10 to 40 kilograms. And of course, you wanna make sure that you're looking at the full nutrient composition so you can ensure that you're meeting the DRIs for that specific patient in terms of their age as well as their gender. The type of formula that we select is going to be variable on a couple of different factors, including the way it's going to be consumed. So whether it's going to be provided through an oral route or whether we're administering it through an enteral access device. When it comes to discussing pediatric formulas, there's a couple of different things that we need to define. So we have a couple of definitions. The first is sole source nutrition. So sole source nutrition means that when that product is going to be prescribed in order to be able to meet the full patient's caloric goal, it's going to be meeting 100% of their DRI requirements. So therefore, we can then utilize this product in order to be able to meet 100% of the patient's nutritional needs. So you might see this on a product itself, or you might see it within the product guide. And so it's important to understand the differences between sole source nutrition and not providing that full nutritional value. We then have osmolality, and osmolality is not to be confused with osmolarity, but osmolality is formally defined as the amount of solutes that are dissolved in a kilogram of solvent. So it's usually written as milliosmoles per gram. And what osmols do is that in the lumen of the intestine, they'll attract in water. So you might potentially lead to some watery stool or refer to as well as osmotic diarrhea. So this will be important to understand when you're discussing overall tolerance. Pediatric formulas can generally be divided into a couple of different classifications. We first have those that are for oral nutrition supplements. And oral nutrition supplements are designed to supplement oral intake. So you might be utilizing these in patients in order to increase the caloric value within their diet or for being able to provide supplemental nutrition for those that are not able to obtain their full nutritional intake from food alone. Oral nutrition supplements might potentially be fortified with vitamins and minerals or some products may not be fortified with vitamins or minerals. Some oral nutrition supplements can also be utilized as an enteral nutrition formula through an enteral access device. So for example, you might have a kid that potentially is able to take some oral nutrition supplements by mouth, but maybe they're not really consistent with the amounts of volumes that they're able to take. So if they drink 50% of it at one specific meal, then we might be giving the remainder of that through their NG tube. Now, when it comes to enteral nutrition formulas, we generally have a wide variety of different classifications. First, we'll begin with discussing standard formulas. So you might also hear standard formulas referred to as polymeric or intact. And really these formulas contain intact nutrients that require normal digestion and absorption. So they do require a normal functioning GI tract. These products sometimes can also be plant-based and they may contain fiber or they might be potentially fiber-free. Similar to adult products, these products are suitable for lactose intolerance. However, they do still contain milk protein if you're using a standard formula that's derived from a cow's milk protein source. So you want to be mindful of that because while they might be suitable for lactose intolerance, there is still some portion of lactose within there. It's usually about less than four grams of lactose per one liter of serving. With that, um, it would not be appropriate to be able to utilize for patients with galactosemia or for a cow's milk protein allergy. 
We then have standard formulas that are concentrated. So your standard formula that's non-concentrated is usually about 1.0 kcals per ml or 1.2 kcals per ml, whereas a concentrated formula is a little bit higher than that. So it might be 1.5 kcals per ml or 2 kcals per ml. And this is really designed to be able to provide a higher caloric provision in a lower amount of volume. So it might be helpful for patients that have volume intolerance where we can be able to still obtain the same caloric value, but in less overall volume for the day. Or it can also be helpful in patients that have really high caloric needs and we want to be able to provide them with an appropriate amount of volume so we can think about a calorically concentrated formula as well. We then have our disease-specific formulas. So these generally include those that are designed for patients with diabetes, those for renal disorders, as well as ketogenic products and different metabolic products as well. In pediatrics, there are limited disease-specific formulas, so sometimes you might be limited in your selection, and sometimes you might be even so limited that you do have to utilize an adult product. So if you are using a combination of an adult product and a PEDS product or just using an adult product temporarily, you always want to make sure that you're completing a full nutrient analysis so that you're ensuring that you're meeting that patient's specific needs. We then have our semi-elemental formulas. So semi-elemental formulas are partially broken down and they do contain some portions of hydrolyzed peptide proteins. Semi-elemental formulas are commonly utilized for patients with malabsorption. And many of these products do have a little bit of higher amounts of MCT. And this is because MCT is absorbed a little bit quicker. It bypasses the lymphatic system and is directly absorbed into portal blood. We then have our elemental formulas. So elemental formulas are designed for those that were non-responsive to that semi-elemental formula and are requiring a further broken down product. So they might have severe allergies or they might have severe forms of intolerance or malabsorption where they really need a fully broken down product. The protein source of these is going to be free amino acids. And some of these formulations might come within a powdered formula, whereas many of your typical pediatric formulas are generally available as ready to feeds. We then have our blenderized tube feedings. So blenderized tube feedings include two different subclassifications, those that are home prepared as well as those that are commercial products. And a blenderized tube feeding is defined as a combination of foods and liquids. So these are typically popular in patients that are on enteral nutrition for a long-term basis. And they have been shown to be effective in research and being able to help to improve tolerance as well as leading to a more diverse microbiome. We then have our modular products. So modular products are designed to be able to enhance overall nutrient delivery to the patient. And they're typically going to be broken down into your macronutrient categories. So we have our carbohydrate modulars. These are typically designed in order to be able to provide additional sources of calories. We have protein modulars that are designed to enhance protein delivery. So they might be utilized for critically ill patients where we have a higher protein need or patients that have pressure injuries where we're looking to optimize that protein delivery. And then we also have fat modulars. So these are commonly in the form of MCT. And this is also designed to be able to enhance caloric delivery. Whenever we're talking about formulas, it's really important to be able to remember that we need to have safe handling and preparation so we can ensure the safety of our patients. So whenever you're educating families on their home regimen, you always wanna make sure that you're educating them on proper hang times for specific products. So with blenderized tube feedings that are going to be home prepared, these have a hang time of two hours, but that will decrease to a hang time of one hour if it's greater than 90 degrees or hotter outside. Blenderized tube feedings that are commercial products have varying hang times depending on what type of brand you have. So you always want to make sure that you're checking with the manufacturer's recommendations for what those specific hang times are. Breast milk has a hang time of four hours. Reconstituted powder formulas have a hang time of four hours. Our formulas with any sort of added modular has a hang time of four hours. An open sterile product that's in an inpatient setting has a hang time of eight hours. Open cereal products that are in the home setting have a hang time of 12 hours, and then our closed systems have hang times of 24 to 48 hours. That concludes today's video where we talked about pediatric formulas. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.